Hello and welcome to the fourth episode of Baldur's Gate. I'm Shox and we just picked up Khalid and Shahira and completed our party of six. So I, I think one thing we still need to do is actually uh, make sure everybody has good equipment. So let's take a look. We have a belt uh, that is not identified, so we have to take care of that in a bit. I think uh, some of the guys here could use better ranged weapons. He has a shield, so uh, he cannot have a ranged weapon at the same time. But he has right now a bow, so I was thinking we could give him a heavy crossbow because it gives uh, damage plus two, but I think it is a little slower. So we have to take a look at that. I think the crossbow is more powerful. Uh, oh, it's like, yeah, get, gives damage plus two and the bolts are more powerful. I think the, um, just the simple arrows are 1d6 and these are 1d8, but I think they fire a little slower. So uh, we should take a look at that. Then Shahira cannot use any of those, but um, she probably can. Oh, I selected the heavy crossbow as well. Anyhow, that's fine. Uh, we just give them to, to him afterwards. But what I was saying, she can use a sling, so we probably want to give her a sling. And also, I think everyone can use a bow, right? But Xara cannot, so we also should give him a sling, which is uh, more powerful than um, a just the darts he has right now. Uh, I'm also looking for some armor for uh, Bardash, but there is really nothing here that uh, we can make use of. And there are also no better weapons than the quarter stuff that you hear is right now. And I actually want them to focus on um, range combat anyway. So let's equip her with that. Um, this goes to him. And I hope he can make... Oh, no, 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 sorry, wrong person. To him. Instead of the arrows, he now can use uh, the crossbow. And let's take a look what that does. So here we have 3 to 10. Number of attacks, 1. And with these, we have 1 to 6. Number of attacks, 2. So it's 2 to 12, basically, and this one is 3 to 10. Mm, yeah. I, I don't know if there's a, a big difference. I think what's better for, for Montarion actually is to get a better bow. Um, I don't know if, if he can actually use that one. He can use a long bow. So right now he's a short bow, which has speed factor 6. And a long bow has speed factor 7 and Thaco plus 1. The long bow is similar to the short bow, except that the staff is about as tall as the archer is. Usually 6 to 6.5 feet. It has better range and accuracy than the short bow, but a slower speed factor. So yeah, um, I don't know if that's worth it. I think the composite longbow would be a good upgrade. That would basically merging the the heavy crossbow, the plus two from a heavy crossbow, and the speed of the normal bow. But he cannot use that, so therefore it doesn't really matter to us. Uh, the belt needs to be identified. Uh, quarter stuff we don't have any use for. Gordon scroll, usually I wouldn't like let it just, you know, stay around. I probably would burn the notice um, because we already read it. There's nothing really, really interesting in it, but actually we, we might want to keep it if we ever find a mysterious E to be like, hey, we got a note. We're, you know, we're the real deal. We're supposed to be here or we're supposed to, you know, to talk to you because we are friends of Gorion. Let's see if we can redistribute some of the healing potions from the quick slots. Uh, the bow, I think we can't really do anything with it. Uh, we still have to give the sling 
to XR. And I don't even know if we can resell those. So let's just toss them away. Um, yeah, I think we only can resell uh, quantities of 20. So yeah, let's just free up our inventory. Um, check the spells again. Okay, so Xar has Minor Drain, which I think is, is not uh, a good spell for him because he should never actually take a lot of damage. Um, therefore, and it only drains four damage, so it's not really worth it over armor. So, um, I think we want to make him learn armor. And these are all melee ones. I do not want him to be a, a frontline fighter. Um, let's just give him armor. Yeah, armor magic missile uh, sounds like a good combination. Uh, Jahira is mostly in the back, just responsible for uh, giving support. So that's why she's twice uh, cure uh, light wounds and one entangle. So that should give us um, a good, good baseline to, uh, you know, to support our team because they will mostly have supporter roles and attack from the distance. All right, sounds good so far. So let's gather our party and get going. We have one quest from, what was the name? From Joya. We have to find her ring that was stolen by some ugly hobgoblins. And we shall take a look if we cannot find those hobgoblins and get that ring back. And maybe also some other things they stole along the way. And you know, I wouldn't mind keeping that considering I'm right now not the richest person in town. So um, I like the formation of a triangle just because we have one main frontline fighter, which is uh, Bardash, and then two kind of secondary frontline fighters slash uh, melee heroes. And the third row behind it is everyone is ranged. So if um, things go uh, take a turn for the worse, we can still like with our two secondary um, guys catch any incoming enemies and hopefully draw their aggro before they get a chance to especially hit Xar. Like Xar is the one that needs to be protected the most because he is by far the weakest and Therefore, a single hit could already be very devastating to him. I think they're all in reach already. So let us make them attack. Nope. Alright. And I keep those two just waiting. Oh, that was it? Alright, first enemy down. There was a second one I saw, so I just want to make him see me. Position myself here. He follows, and and basically everyone in the back, as soon as he is in range, well that didn't work out, but everybody just attacked, never mind. <laughs> and that was it for that guy as well. Let's just see if they had any nice things in them. This is a gem, a helm, and the usual out like fighter outfit. Usual, I think, a ring. So let's take a look. We got a silver ring, just you know, random silver ring, and a Isle gem. Isle is actually short for Iolite, although a common nickname is Violet Stone, even though its overall hue is usually blue. Isles are usually cut to faceted gems to best display the stone's color change, and it is viewed from different directions. Small. Cut owls can be clear, but larger specimens usually contain silky inclusions of another substance, such as hematite crystals, which give the same rich golden flash of color as in sunstones. Oh, I hope it's worth a lot of money. And let's just keep going. Apparently, those were not the hobgoblins that did steal the ring, because we still have no ring in our hands. So um, let's just follow the road um, to be on the safe side. I might um, explore the west of the the map a bit later, um, depending 
on how these battles go, if there's any real danger um, by fighting those. Okay, so um, we went a little too far forward because we aggroed the third guy. So the next time, we really should let them come right up into our face before we attack them. Because um, that prevents basically getting into the aggro zone of um, enemies that were just waiting behind. Alright, so it looks like we defeated all of those. Let's loot the bodies. Oh, I, I think it's an identify scroll. Let's just take all of that. That is a ring that looks kind of like it would be um, firing. And uh, as you notice, that my inventory is full. Even though I'm only carrying 128 pound, 28 pounds, as soon as all my slots are full, I cannot carry anything more. So I told Khalid to pick up all the remaining things and loot the bodies. All right, there's another stone. Let's see what this stone is. A bloodstone gem. Bloodstone is a dark greenish gray variety of quartz flecked with red crystal impurities. 90% of the bloodstone in the realms come from the Galena Mountains in Damara, and most of those from a single mine in Bloodstone Pass. The Border Pass is heavily fortified and guarded as bloodstones are the chief export for this region. Again, I hope they are worth a lot of money. So considering we're already up here, I want to uh, try to go around the east side and discover uh, the map a little bit more. Especially go to the northern um, edge of the map and see if anything is above. So above us there is... drum roll. There's some farm I think we can go to. It leads into big city. I do not know which, uh, like what that big city is. Is that Baldur's Gate? Is that uh, something else? I do not know. Uh, Nashville is down here in the Nashville mines, so that will be our next uh, destination. Because apparently everybody wants to go down to Nashville and figure out what's going on with the iron. So let's go into the uh, east corner and see what is there. I think we already discovered um, what is in the east corner. No, we do not know. We have not been on the east, to the east of the friendly arm. So maybe there's another area we can check out. But first, there is another enemy to check out and kill. So... Let's take care of that. And that was too easy. <laughs> it was literally like the group attacked once and the hobgoblin fell. Ah, uh, I forgot. He's full. So, uh, nothing special, just the usual uh, leather armor and everything. Alright, so there are more um, hobgoblins that want to fight us. So shall be a range. Oh no, no, no! You guys stay. Yeah, that didn't work as ex as planned. But he thankfully died very quickly, so that could have gone very wrong if they would have instead of um, attacking. Oh, Khalid has has too many heavy things on him. So he's 148 pounds instead, of, and he can carry 120. So we have to distribute the weight a little bit. Actually no, that was the wrong direction. So now he's he's getting close. I think um, he still can walk, but it, it shows that he, um, you know, it's heavy for him. He doesn't really want to carry more. So let's see if we can pick up all of that. No, that was too much for him as well. Wow, those guys really cannot carry anything. Let's give that to Motorion. Uh, the helmet to him. Another helmet to him. Holy crap. <laughs> they really cannot carry anything. All right. Thank God we have six people so we can carry all the things that we just found and uh, on the bodies of those hobgoblins. I don't think anybody will miss them. The items and the hobgoblins, that is. Uh, there's actually something to the east, Pelled Veil. 
we might want to check that out sometime soon as well. So let's get back into the friendly arm in, or actually to Joya, I think was her name, to return the ring that we found. I'll let's just uncover the map while we're at it. So uh, we know what's around the friendly arm. You never know if that can come in handy or if we find any more hobgoblins that really, really want to give us XP and stuff that we can then sell to the innkeeper. So let's just walk around here. This is a pretty big castle. You, don't, you wouldn't think it um, like from the inside. Sadly, we cannot get in from here, but it's kind of the point of um, castles so you can't easily get inside them except through the gate. Why can I not scroll there? This is weird. Yeah, I cannot scroll to the left anymore. Wow. Bugs? Yeah, this sucks. Anyhow. Yeah, I can't... Oh, now it works. Sometimes. It is really weird. <laughs> Something bad is going on here. All right, let's go uh, to Choya, give her the ring, sell all the things that we just found to get us some money, money, money. And then I think we should go on to our way to Nashville. I thank you. This ring was a gift when I set out on my own. I couldn't bear the thought of some smelly old hobgoblin having it. You're a good sort, and I'll say so to anyone that asks. You're welcome. So here we can see uh, that the different um, personalities have different reactions to our good deed. For example, Monteron. Monteron is... Um, where can we see it? Monteron is neutral evil. So he wants us to do, to be evil and do evil things. So he's like, you know, why? So insufferably charitable? Same as Xar, like, you know, must we be so insufferably charitable? Do we really have to do that? Because he's evil. He wants to do evil things. Uh, and Khalid and Imwen are like, you know, great. You know, we, we, app we approve of your actions. So right now it is, we have to be very careful um, because we have, we have neutrals, me and Chahira, I think. Yeah, so me and Chahira neutral, then Khalid and Imoen are good, but Monteron and Xar are evil. So we have a very kind of balanced party, which is not necessarily a good thing because if you do something good, you only please the ones that are good. If you do something evil, you only please the ones that are evil. So we have to uh, see if we can balance that and uh, prevent those guys to fight each other and get mad at each other. But we will see how that goes. Let's go back to the end. And actually we might want to take a room because someone picked up an identify role, correct. So Xar should uh, learn this uh, role. So you copy the spell book and because we have one thing that needs to be identified, uh, we should do that right away. So let's first sell everything, then sleep, identify, sleep again. So we can uh, change the spells that everyone um, has on them. Most six are like I want him to identify something and then basically uh, go back to the armor, twice armor uh, spell, which is much more useful for, for the whole party. Let's first sell all these things. Oh, can she wear leather armor? I do not know if Imwen is allowed to wear leather armor. She is, oh, that's great. So uh, she's a little more beefy as well now. Everybody else has armor and the, the back row doesn't need as good uh, of an armor, but I, I guess it could be important as soon as we uh, have to face 
enemies that have ranged attacks and that I necessarily cannot um, control from far away. Sixar so didn't even learn those spells yet, and I think um, instead of this, we want to do the identify and get a room. Royal, of course. And now Xar can actually identify the the belt we have here. So identify spell. What is this? Cold resistance plus 100% doubles all fire-based damage taken. Belt of Antipode. Trimmed in the fur of a polar bear, the sturdy belt is tooled with images of blue moons and white ice foes. The wearer is immune to all cold-based effects, but suffers double any fire damage. Um, you know. Okay. Um, we just have to make sure anytime we get attacked by fire, immediately take the belt off. But I... Yeah, you know, I don't think we face any elemental damages right now anyway. So it might become more important down the road. And I imagine the Nashka mines are more like hot things down there than um, cold things. Actually, let's do a double armor. A simple task. Rest again. Open the door. All who behave so they can learn the spells. And now I Where think we're... We're only left with actually going off to Nashville. Uh, we could also take a look at the west of the map first, see if we find any more uh, warlock, no, um, hobgoblins, <laughs> not warlocks. I think this is just a temple. Yes, temple. All right, let's get out of the city, uh, explore the west side of the map a bit. I mean, there's not really a lot left. I doubt there's uh, tons of enemies. And I think as soon as we discovered the east side and the south side, we could just travel back there even if we're at the eastern edge. So that's pretty nice. So we don't actually have to walk across the map again. And yeah, that's a little bit dangerous to let Xar run at the front line being the very weakest of them all. So back information, and let's see what we find out here. Hopefully nothing that will kill us, therefore we just quick save real quick. Just to make sure we didn't just do all that work for... Your wit be as sharp as my blade. Do we exchange jabs, or will you cease your prattle? So yeah, now, basically, that's what I was talking about. Because we have a mixed party of good and evil, uh, they will start, you know, taking stabs at each other. And, you know, as I said, she, even though Jahira is neutral, uh, she condemns the action of Montaran because she doesn't trust him. Considering he's evil, um, you know, there, there might be... A good reason to not trust him but he's part of our party so um, everybody in the party has to make do with each other and fight as one team otherwise we are in trouble so um, I'm not sure what kind of party I will build down the road and if I have to choose one side or the other or if I can make it work with a, a rather mixed party but I don't think I have to worry about this right away. Um, we deal with that problem when we get to it. And I think there's really nothing more left on this map. Let's just uncover the last bit here. And then travel. Um, everybody really wants us to go to Nashville. So the question is, do we go to High Hatch first? So we, had, we, were, we came down here. So, let's go to High Hedge first. Oh, so like on our way, we were attacked by an enemy. So while we're traveling and we have to defeat him now. And this is a ghost. I have no idea how powerful those guys are. But I will rotate us first. Just to make sure. And then everybody attack. Okay, that was um, 
So he, he basically ignored our frontline fighters and immediately went for one of the ranged guys, which is very dangerous. Uh, we have to like make sure the ranged guys then appropriately walk away. And I wasn't sure who he was going for. And Xar is the one with the absolutely lowest HP, so I was just you know trying to get him out of the way just in case. All right, what did he drop? Just a little gold. Nothing much, really. All right, so we killed that guy. Now, further on to High Hedge. Um, yeah, I have no idea what, what expects us down here. So let's be pretty careful where we walk and, and maybe find a road first that we can travel. Which it really doesn't look like there is. To the east of us, there's Berigost. And um, I think we want to travel there next anyway. Oh, there's something that kind of resembles a road. But I'm not sure if that is actually more safe to travel than just going through the, the forest. But we will see. Let's just explore a bit around here what we find and see if, if there's anything that is too powerful for us. I just quick save just to make sure. Huh, what is this? Kivan. Uh, I don't know, like, I mean, let's... Is he f friendly? Hail. It is not often that I come across strangers in this part of the world. What foolishness takes city dwellers this far from civilization? We're, we're adventurers on the lookout for evil to smite. A strange coincidence. I have a quest similar to your own. I have been hunting the bandits in the region for the past few months. Perhaps if we work together, we would fare better. What say you to that? Hmm. Hmm. I'd say like I'm I mean I'm tempted. I think he looks like an archer considering his um like page here. I'm tempted to kick out Imoen because we are a thief and um I think Montreon is a fighter thief as well. So we have a ton of thief capabilities in here, and anyone doesn't really add a lot besides that. I have to check her stats on archery and stuff. We'll help you against the bandits, but only if you tell us why you've spent months hunting them. Their leader, an ogre named Tazuk, took the life of someone very dear to me. Ta. <laughs> I mean, we're not really on a vengeance term, but I mean, someone just slaughtered Gore in front of our face. Like, I mean, we are angry. We can sympathize with him. Um, so I was like, thanks for being honest. You can join our party. I hope that we will work well together. Mm. Yeah. Can I, can I see their stats? I cannot. I think it's time for Imwen to say goodbye. What you want? All right, so um, we changed our party, just just like that. But but we are friends and everything. We've been friends for years. I guess I guess I'll just wait till you need me again, because you will. Just wait and see. Say so I don't think that she yep. will be. Um, mad at me we can come back to this location and just switch her out again um wait what why can i not undo this Where to now? wow oh there you go all right so let's check out our new guy um it is kivan a ranger his proficiencies are 
in halberd and longbow. This is great. So uh, we have someone who's really strong in longbow. So I want, some, want him to more stand the background and really deal the damage from afar. But he only does three to eight damage. And, but okay, he has five and a half attacks. That means um, he will attack twice and then every two rounds another time. So um, he does three to eight twice uh, per round. He does six to... Uh, 16 damage basically it is not bad considering um, oh we do 10 to 17 um, and have also the the five and a half amount of attacks so we might actually let him use the halberd which is six to 15 three and a half times so he gets one additional attack um, every two rounds yeah, we'll, I'll, like, we'll, we'll do the math later. Uh, for now, I think I just want him to do a longbow just because um, he doesn't have the biggest armor and he deals enough damage just standing in the back. And uh, I'm pretty sure he can use a composite longbow and that will really then help him out, giving him a 5 to 10, I think, um, attacking twice per round. So it's like uh, 10 to 20 damage, which will help a lot. On this note, let's end episode four. Thanks so much for enjoying this episode with me. See you next time.